thing in your nightmare, that thing that's holding you back, that thing that's dragging you down, that thing is you. You will not outwork me. And the whole gig is just a giant hustle. That's all it is. Life is just a hustle. That's all life is. One giant hustle. We're gonna try to get some progress on the trailer. We gotta figure out what we need for this door. Go to the metal yard. I have took these screws out of the inside and then I had to close it to take the screws out of the outside to get these caps to come off. So y'all are gonna see firsthand with me what exactly is going on. This little half inch plywood, you've lost your mind putting half inch plywood on a trailer door. Um, and then the little screws, this was what was holding the door down, is these little tiny Phillips shears. They're long, but the heads are tiny. I mean, they don't do nothing worth the crap. And then I'm going to tell you, I don't know what's underneath here. I know it's pretty tore up, it looks like, but whoever replaced this plywood, because this plywood is pretty fresh and didn't do any freaking work. Looks like we got more screws to get and didn't do any work to the metal. Man, dude, you suck. You should have done some metal work to preserve this thing. So let's get these last couple screws out real fast of this plywood. And then I will pause. I'm not going to lift it. And then I'm going to show you all on camera. We're going to take first look at it. All right, there's one broken screw down there. Actually, there's one more. I just seen that. I don't know if it'll come out. Um, them little screws. Man. They make actually plywood to metal screws, by the way. I'll show you that when we get there. All right, let's see what we got. Oh my God. I can already see some jankity stuff going on. Oh, buddy. Let's put this guy over here. Look at that. Why? Why, why, why? Why not scab in a new piece of metal? God. Look at that. Look at all that. Man. What is this? We're literally just sitting in here. All right, so what we need to do now, I mean, it's not god awful, but we got a work cut out, is we need to get the measurement of these tubes right here. Okay, we need to know this, the, the thickness of your door. We don't care about the width, we can go wider. Well, we gotta maintain the same thickness um, because I'm pretty sure that that trim is set up for three quarters plywood. Um, because it is kind of bent in using this little half inch junk that somebody put on here and then when we get back now that i know the thickness i'm gonna go get a bunch of this a couple sticks of this so we make sure we have plenty when we get back we'll take apart the rest of this this ramp and everything you know this afternoon and because i gotta grab welders and all that stuff take apart ramps see if we have any damage at the top more than likely on your trailers your damage is going to be down here at the bottom because of the water and then we're not gonna replace all of these um, studs. We're basically gonna scab. So we will be putting new studs beside them. Some of the studs will do like the, the old trailer will run long ways, especially where the tires of the car is gonna go. We'll try to run some the full distance uh, to help support the weight, maybe get some wider stuff. And then we'll scab all these bottoms. So we'll come up like this and we'll weld some beside it to put the strength back in it. Or depending on what they got over there, I'll go ahead and get some full runs and we'll literally just go right beside all of these because uh, I don't want to disturb the frame. I don't want to rebuild the frame. I kind of want to build a new frame inside the old frame, if that makes sense. And I'll show you as we go. Um, we want to make sure our door is square. We're going to exit out. We're going to do all that good stuff. So make sure you stay tuned. Um, we got to fix all this junk. Looks like this is the wire for the license plate light. So all that's going to need to be fixed brace all this up we've got to take the outside skin off we got to strip this frame all the way down and then put some blocks down so we can work around this thing and go in here and patch everything uh this weekend so let's take a break let's go get some metal 
and then we'll get back on this. And look, you might say, well, maybe they didn't have the capabilities to do welding. You know, I get that. I used to not be able to weld too, I'm self-taught. But what I would have done is go get you some stock, okay? Some metal stock and from wherever, your parts store, your, uh, your big box store, wherever. Get you some metal stock, man. And come up to like here, you know, and go down to there. And then through bolt it through the metal stock up in here and some fresh meat. Don't self tap screw it down here and rotted stuff. Okay. And then if you can't, if, once you do your piece like that, okay, then take your 90 degree bracket and through bolt it also through your new piece of metal, through bolt it through the door down here, you know, go from there. I would also add new metal to here, through bolt that or self tap screw that, then put your L bracket in there. Basically, attach you some new meat. Okay, some new metal to good old metal. So you got to come up just like building houses. You got to, if you're remodeling houses, you got to get out of the rotted wood, you know, preferably cut it out. But if you're going to attach something to rotted wood, you got to at least get out of it and come into the good stuff before you can make it a connection. You can't make a connection at rotted, rusted stuff. There's no strength there. So new metal should have been put in. Personally, in this situation, I would have took my cutoff wheel or saw saw, whatever you got. And I would have cut this back a little bit on each of these. And then I would have come in here with a fresh piece of stock from your parts store, your box store, and go from here all the way down to that double. Because it's pretty, it looks like it's decent down there. Like decent, all your damage is in here. Put you a new piece of stock through there. Attach it, you know, where the metal is decent in this area. There's, it looks like might be decent down there. And then scab your legs to that. And then use 90 degree brackets in every corner and maybe even a T bracket across the face of it, then put your wood back on it. That would be a excellent repair for a DIY with no welder and only a saw saw. Like that's literally what you could have done to be a lot stronger. You could have even went one step farther if you don't can't even do metal, if you can only do two by fours and put treated two by fours in here and the same thing through bolt them, you know, rip them down, turn them sideways, through bolt them into the metal. You could have made a lot better structural repair without having to weld if you don't have welding capabilities. All right, so on their metal rack, the only stuff that they have that works inch and a half by inch and a half is gonna be this stuff. So we're gonna have to go square tubing, not rectangle, because they don't have any square tubing that is inch and a half. We gotta make what we have work. Now that was $62 for 20, foot stick uh cut down they cut it down for me into six foot six foot and then what was left that's the reason why we are going to scab this trailer back together we're going to get up into the good stuff and we're going to make scabs and we're not going to replace the full runs the full length runs because if you were to rebuild that door uh you're getting out of the diy budget friendly uh gig and you're now getting into basically buying and building a brand new door and that's not what uh we're about we still have to buy plywood on top of that so we'll probably end up with everything let's see here we'll probably end up putting a hundred hundred and fifty dollars into this door by the time we do the plywood and the new hinges and all that stuff so uh let's get this stuff back to the house let's grab the welder and get back to the house and uh start making some repairs all right so this is where i got the other afternoon with this thing um a lot of people would say to go ahead and just rebuild this gate and I would absolutely love to rebuild this gate. I wish I had an unlimited budget, but the truth is, is that I don't know what I'm gonna be able to sell my other trailer for. And whatever I sell that for is going to pay off what we're in the hole in this. Everything I do, a lot of what I do is I flip stuff. So I put a lot of stuff on credit and then sell something for more than I'm in it and then pay the credit back off. So you always have to be really careful when I'm doing my projects. I'm always, be it personal vehicles, race car, anything, race car just kind of gets paid on but personal vehicles trailers stuff like that I have to be careful what i dig how deep i dig my hole because i've got to get myself out of that hole so um we're pretty much on this like maxed out on the comfort zone of what i think i can get out of my other trailer for what i'm in this trailer i'm not really comfortable spending too much money so that's why we're doing what we're doing we're trying to make the best out of what we got uh, we still have to buy metal and we have to buy two sheets of three quarter inch plywood um so on this i have used up my three pieces here so one two three and number three pieces that i bought out at one stick 
uh, these were really bad and broke in half. And I went ahead and replaced them with solid pieces and I figured I'd scab everything else. Our section down here, that was completely busted. Um, and the whole hinge off of, uh, we actually cut it out. So we cut it out right here. Uh, we cut that out and then we cut it out right here. And that was the busted piece that the hinge was on. We replaced it with a solid tube that we cut out of here. So we repurposed the tubes we cut out of here, the good sections. So we went from there to there and then we scabbed over it from there all the way to here and then did these long welds on both sides to give it strength. Um, this metal is not the best, but when you put this much weld together onto, then it, it turns, I guess, half strong pieces into whole strong pieces, if that makes sense. Now you still got issues like this right here is some rust and rot, but by the time I welded all of this stuff all the way around, I put these up to this because since this metal's rusted right here, your weld right here is no longer, the metal is bad there. So you got to step it up, you know, an inch and a half to get into the good metal where it's not rusted. So that's the reason why I do these like this. I did the last trailer the same way, butted up to it, stepped the weld up, and then that turns this piece back into strong because the rest of the way up this piece is fine. And we got some rot up here. Um, I guess at one point that was where the plywood probably went together because it's the same on the other side. Um, this time we'll be going, which last, last time he had already switched, whoever did it already switched to the full sheet on the bottom and half sheet on top. It probably was originally built with full sheet here, half sheet there. And so this was probably the joint where the rain ran down into. Um, so we'll be keeping our switch where full sheet there, this time three quarters of an inch. So that'll add some strength to these, but we need to try to put a little strength in the side of these, honestly. Um, so that's what we've done down here. Now this right here, I did accidentally the other night, wasn't paying attention. I burnt this whole weld in and I said, screw it, let's go ahead and weld this one on this side also. And then I realized that this is actually, this one is supposed to be welded to the trailer and this one's supposed to be welded to the gate. And now I have it where the door won't close because of this weld. So I got to cut this weld this morning right here uh, before I caught myself, cut that weld out so we can get this trailer door where it's open and closing again. And then everything else, we're just going to continue moving forward today on just scabbing, man. Just scabbing and patching. Uh, I got a little bit of good steel left over it. I don't know where I'm going to put it or if I am going to put it. Uh, we got some rot here. Uh, we might plate some of this. I might go get me some plate um, and put like a triangle plate in these corners. And that will give us some more strength back that. Uh, that corner could be plated. This right here is the place I'm contemplating right now on what to do with. Um, this is in bad shape. So this is actually bent like this curved. So we've definitely got to section this. So we're going to come through here, cut this out, cut sections of it out. I'll probably just go ahead, maybe all the way up to there. I'm not hundred percent sure. I have these two on the table right here that we took out of here. That was bent as you can see and rusted up there. So there's enough meat in here in the center section right here to fix this. I can technically cut here and go all the way to there. So I don't have two welds. And then I'd have that little bit right there. We'll probably take them pieces and scab in between these some more, like maybe a piece in here or something, double up the bottom. My last trailer, what I did was, if you recall on that build series, is I went between every single one like this and I completely doubled up every single stud. I doubled up on top of what was already there to just save, save time and money and across the top, like this one right here. It's completely shot right here. So this needs a doubler. So we'll have to come in here and at least step it over to here and over to here to double that up. And then this whole side right here is pretty bad. So this really all needs a doubler. Um, that whole piece is really bad. Dude, that whole top piece like really needs to be replaced. Really this whole gate needs to be rebuilt. There's no way around it. No matter what you sit here and say, um, all of this is bad, like everything. <sighs> but it's just, it's, man i don't know i got a lot of figuring out to do I'm definitely keeping this down here on this bottom because this bottom's not bad i might honestly change my mind this week and cut every single one of them off and then put a brand new piece across that i'm just i'm not really sure so that's what we're working on this morning i'm gonna go through here and uh, at least get this one done and then decide on what else i'm cutting out and what else i'm replacing all right, so we put our patch in here. I come through here and cut the bad section out, patched it. 
uh, two of them side by side. Now when you're doing something like that, and obviously you have to put something across the bottom, I clamped another perfectly straight tube left over from this across the bottom with clamps to make sure that our piece is perfectly straight. You got to uh, definitely make sure it's straight like this, that it doesn't have a curve like this because uh, that's gonna affect your plywood and outside of the trailer. Uh, if it curves like this, it doesn't necessarily matter. You just might miss some screws when you go to screw it off. All right, so what we're gonna do this afternoon, got back on this after racing all weekend with John, testing the car at the track. And get back on the trailer. We gotta put seat over this, metal over this. Now, your trailer normally has this kind of siding. It looks kind of like this. This is off the trailer. So it used, it's just thin aluminum okay um it's four foot wide and whatever length now you could buy these panels pre in the correct color you know pre-colored as you can see this one this panel overlaps this or underlaps this one overlaps this one but it goes from here one stud two studs four studs two studs in the center four studs total okay that's four feet um and they all need to overlap starting at the front. The, so when you build it, you start at the back. Back and then this, you do it like that. But they all overlap this way so that as rain is being pushed down the side in the wind, it doesn't go under it. Because you can see the seam right here. If, they were, if this was the front of the trailer this way, then rain would literally be driving under the panel. Versus since the front of the trailer is this way, rain is flowing over and pushing back as you're driving um i went and checked on these panels local i have a trailer supplier local that he was running his mouth last time i come in there to buy something and i told him i re you know rebuilt the trailer before and i'll be doing another one he said hit me up whenever you do another one because i can get you the skins for a pretty good deal so i went back this past time i said i need some white skin what you got how much he says one sheet $108 I said have a good day so I went back to my buddy who owns a roofing business they also do gutters so roofs gutters stuff like that uh, and I said hey I need some more metal so we got three rolls of metal now in the previous trailer we rebuilt we went over this and I explain how much cheaper this is. I bought all three of these rolls for $75, cut to the eight foot length that I wanted. The only deal is, or the trick here is, these are not four feet. So let me grab a tape measure and we will see how wide these are because I know they're not four feet, so you have to do things a little bit different. So these that I got from him are 41 feet, 41 inches. <laughs> basically um so a little under four feet meaning that uh it won't break perfect down the side of your trailer now he said that he can get eight foot pieces i meant four foot wide pieces uh it's just um he doesn't keep them in stock and i didn't know he could get them and i'm sure it's a little bit more than this man i can't get that to hook should be good right there. So 41 inches falls right there. Okay, so what's gonna happen is you either take your piece to here, let's say, and then when you overlap the next one, there's no stud to drill there. So you'd have to do rivets. You'd have to drill holes. You'd have to support it from the backside, drill holes and put rivets to pull the two pieces together, or you're just gonna waste one stud. So since it goes to here, we would put it up and then we would let it hang to here but then this piece right here we would drop back to this stud so we'd have an overlap every three studs versus every four studs and it would take you know maybe one or two more sheets by the time you get to the whole inner trailer but you're saving a ton of freaking money if you get three rolls for 75 like i got or anything near that versus 108 every single break pretty much now across the back of the trailer my math said that we would need three instead of the two that was here so there was only two here before this one will be three not that big of a deal what i'm hoping i can do is let's see i didn't measure this out but let's do this live on the camera hoping i can put one right here in the center 41 inches yep so that'd be 34 inches so we'll put one up in the center and then we will come on our outside and 
let's see here where the piece is not 41 inches ago there so we would overlap okay i think that's how we did the last trailer so do your centerpiece first and then overlap your outers and where that break is you would um put rivets or if you uh had the money and you wanted to do this or the material when i built the side of my last trailer what i did is where i knew the metal was going to fall i actually put the metal up and then everywhere it fell i put another metal stud in and then kept it moving that way i didn't have rivets down the side of my trailer so my current trailer my 20 foot one that we're gonna be selling it has no rivets down the side it's all screws because there's a stud everywhere but on this one um i just to save and not waste material I went right back where all the studs were and I didn't add an extra, but you could come in here and literally just add a stud where the 30 uh, to 41 breaks out on both sides. And then you'd be, you know, you'd be breaking it right on studs pretty much. And you won't have any rivets. The only point of doing that is so you don't have rivets. You can also um, put a two by four in here. So we might actually do that on this one is um, come in here, put a two by four. I have these two right here laying around and then you can screw your metal into your two by four it would be screwed in like normal but then where it overlaps instead of having studs or instead of having rivets you would just screw it into a two by four and then you would screw your two by four obviously into the or the plywood into the screw by four backside and that keeps the two by four from moving and lock everything around down um maybe put a tree to two by four in there technically it should be sealed up it shouldn't get wet at all because if the trailer door is open and it rains, the floor would hopefully be painted and it won't really get too much water in there. And then the outside, the way your sheet is online, and then you have that cap that goes around the edge, there technically should get really no water inside the two by four, hardly at all. But to be safe, you could go treat it if you want to. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do yet, if I'm gonna add two by fours or if I'm just gonna rock and roll with uh, um, the rivets. But let me lay this out and uh, get some metal up here because I'm supposed to have some rain moving in this week. It looks like we might have, we got to get the grinder out and grind some of this popcorn welds, some of these screw holes. Another thing you need to kind of figure out is where your screws need to go. So this old piece right here already has holes all in it. They're stripped out on this piece beside it. They didn't use this piece. Uh, this was a piece of filler piece, but this piece has no screw holes in it. So we're going to mark this one so that we're getting fresh metal. We don't want to go in our old holes if we don't have to, because they could be already stripped out too big. And then same thing over here. We'll jump to this one probably, which is the same thing over there as the outer one instead of this one. And that way we're fresh metal, or I'll have to measure it and make sure I'm hitting between these. Either way, just put a little thought into it. And make sure that your new sheet metal, you're not going to hit old holes because there's nothing worse than putting your sheet metal up and screwing through it. And then you have to go to a bigger screw or something. You can't pull it out and exactly move it like you could plywood because this is a finished outside and you'll you'll see it. So you need to put a little bit of thought in that. Now the perimeter, um, I can't really do nothing about that. Uh, I used the same exact perimeter. It was already there uh, besides that up there. And... I'm gonna have to use the reuse the holes. I might have to go with a bigger screw. Um, and there's already holes in this finished cap that goes around here. So there's already holes in it, as you can see right there on both sides. Um, so I'm gonna have to reuse the holes that are there. When I did this piece, this was scrap. Uh, this was the plywood side, I'm pretty sure, I think. Anyway, I tried to flip it, but yeah. So I need to clean up these welds. You gotta make sure all your welds are not sticking out because then it will mess everything up uh, as far as putting the cap on and the metal on so let me get the grinder out real fast grind some the nails i got a couple old screws left in there that i need to grind out and then we'll be ready to put us some aluminum across the face and the only thing we got to do is get plywood that's the old plywood uh that's the thin stuff i have not went to lows yet got the half inch stuff so let's get at it all right so we got our first sheet up I'm starting to screw it off now I'm just using Phillips bits because like I said, I hate the stuff, absolutely hate the stuff that comes on the trailer. So I'm using 10 by 16 by three quarters. Picked these up in a local hardware store, 100 count. Uh, hopefully it should be enough for this back door. Uh, I'm doing them every five inches. I uh, don't know what the sides are. Let's see. Uh, the sides are every four inches. Looks like three and seven eighths is what the sides are. Every three and seven eighths. Uh, that's a lot. I'm doing every five inches. Um, 
the math is easier than every three and seven eighths. So basically what I did was before you put your stuff up is I have took right here and put a little Sharpie mark at the top of each stud, just like you would in framing where I want them to be, where my lines are gonna be. Did the same thing across the bottom, put lines right here. Then what I do, since I'm doing it by myself, if you have a buddy, it'd be a lot helpfuler, helpful, um, is put a ladder, hold the sheet up. And then I use my clamps, open my door up just a little bit, clamped the top so the sheet's just free hanging. And then you can kind of eyeball it with your clamps and make sure everything is right. And then if everything looks right, if it needs adjustment, adjust it. But if everything looks decent, then come down here and put you one screw down here because your door is gonna be slightly open. So your sheet metal is gonna wanna hang off like this slightly, okay? So it's gonna wanna kind of be hanging straight up and down with gravity. So push your bottom in, put one screw there, and then go up top. Take that clamp off, pull the sheet metal up tight, reclamp it, take the clamp off, pull the sheet metal out of 45 up tight, reclamp it. And now you should have hopefully no wrinkles in it, just like you're making a bed up. Now, the way mine's laid out, my metal is gonna go from this stud, basically a little bit past it, the center one, all the way to, let's see here, this is where the other stud is, a little bit past it, I believe, um, or before it. Yeah, I think it falls before it or something. Anyway, it goes under here a good amount. So I don't want to screw this stud off yet. Everybody's gonna be different. Your layout's gonna be different. Just think about what you're doing. I want my center piece of metal behind my two outers. So I don't want them stacked like this across the trailer. I basically want my center and then my two outers overlapped. So you would say, well, shouldn't you put your center up first? Well, you could. You could go ahead and screw that one off that would be perfectly fine but me i decided i'd start over here get this going and then i would slip it behind there and then when i screw that stud off it should go through both sheets this way and then this one and then we'll do that one last so i'm just kind of starting on the end to get everything square first and then i'll slip behind it so i'm gonna screw this stud off all the way I'm not gonna do the outside i have put one on the outside to hold it and i have put two up there to hold it in place then we're coming back out because our trim right here that goes around the frame the screws will go all the way through that so then we're just temporary to hold it so i'm just basically getting this one stud screwed off so it's nice and solid and then what we're going to do is cut our next piece lap it then we'll go ahead and do our next stud and our next stud and then that should get us all the way to our last piece then after all that's done then you'll be moving to your plywood on the inside and then you'll be putting your trim back on if yours is a C channel like this, it's gonna go on last, of course. Also, if you notice, I started my screws in the center right here, and then I have worked up and I have worked down. Um, you wanna work the wrinkles out. So you wanna start about the center, and then you wanna work straight up, straight down, and then make sure to met push the metal this way, hit one in the center, and then go again, straight up, straight down. Make sure you don't have no wrinkles this way, like bulging between them or nothing. Uh, so even if you need to pull this tight, you know, hit a screw through it or something, clamp it, whatever you gotta do, just make sure you work your way from the center out, just like if you were making a bed sheet or something. Um, you don't want to end up with anything binded up and any wrinkles in the metal. All right, now on this one, my screw slipped. I don't know if it's gonna focus, it's not gonna focus. Um, it was going in there and it wanted to pull the metal out and then it kind of slipped. So I barely nicked the metal right here with the drill bit because I'm being very careful uh, to make sure I'm not putting a ton of pressure on it. But the screw did kick crooked and now it wants to kick crooked every single time. So we're going to stop. We're not going to drill this one with the self tapper. We're going to fix it with a drill bit. So in this case, you just take your drill bit, run you straight through, go ahead and get your pilot hole established, then put your self tapper back in there and then let it finish drilling itself straight in.